Hello everyone, welcome to Sunday School. I am so happy that we got to worship together last week, um, and I'm happy that we are able to continue doing that for the weeks to come. Uh, I am also happy that we are still able to have Sunday School in this format, and I look forward to when we can have Sunday School together again in person. But, to begin, you can see I have a wall behind me, okay? I want you to pretend this wall is sin, okay? Now, on the other side of this wall, is God, okay? And our sins are separating us from God. We can't get to God because of our sins, okay? Now, what happens if we try to push down the wall? Can I push it down? Can't push it down. You think I can kick it down? Maybe if I ran really hard and ran into the wall, it would knock over and I could get to God on the other side of our sins? No. We're not strong enough to knock down the wall of sins and to get to God on our own, okay? We can't get rid of sins by ourselves. But our scripture reading this morning comes from Matthew 19, verses 25 and 26. The disciples asked, asked Jesus, who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. God did for us what we couldn't do. God took away our sins. There's no more wall separating us, okay? God the Father sent his son Jesus to take away our sins. Through Jesus' perfect life and death, we can get on the other side of the wall. We can get to God. Our sins are no longer in the way, standing between us and God because of what Jesus did for us. We aren't separated from God anymore. Our sins aren't blocking us. We don't need to try to push through the wall because Jesus has done it for us. So we can be thankful to God, our Father, and our Son, and Holy Spirit for what was impossible for us to do, he did. Let's begin with prayer. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for sending Jesus to take away our sins. Thank you, Jesus, for living and dying for us so that we could be saved. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for giving us faith to believe in our Savior. Amen. Okay, so I want you to pretend that you are a captain in the army, of an army, and you need to attack a very big, strong city. What weapons would you give the soldiers to use? So you're thinking you might give them guns or cannons or spears or tanks or airplanes or bombs all of these things that they can use to attack the city. Now, the Israelite army is about to attack the city of Jericho, which is the city where Rahab lived that we learned about last time. So if you remember, the city of Jericho has a wall that goes all the way around it. So they can't just go in and out. There's one gate um, and there's a wall. So it's very, very hard to attack. It was a very strong city, okay? Israelites didn't have any of those weapons that they could use to attack the city. But they have God on their side. So we're going to see today how the Israelites are going to follow God's plan and how God is going to give them the victory at Jericho, even though they did not have any of the weapons that we would think they needed. Okay. So our lesson today is going to look at how did the God how did God bless the Israelites at Jericho? So starting off. The Israelites, they have finally crossed the Jordan River. They are finally in the land of Canaan. But before they can live there, they have to take the land from the people that were already there. Okay? So one of the first cities that they come across is the city of Jericho. Jericho, as we've said, is a strong city. It has a wall that goes all the way around it. Okay? The people of Jericho, the people who are living in Jericho, heard that the Israelites were nearby. So they went to the gate and closed the gate. So now no one can get into Jericho, and no one in Jericho can get out, because there's the wall, and then there's the gate that's closed. Now the Israelites knew they could not break into the city on their own. They can't chip away at the wall, they can't break down the gate, um, but they have God on their side. Okay, This is better than having powerful weapons. God is almighty and more powerful than any weapon we could ever think of. Okay. So God went to Joshua and told him, I am going to give you the city of Jericho. 
This is the plan. You and your soldiers are going to march around the city once a day for six days. So once per day, you're going to get all the soldiers. You're going to have a group of soldiers first, then seven priests with trumpets, then the other priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant, and then more soldiers. Soldiers, priests with trumpets, priests carrying the Ark, more soldiers. March around the city once a day for six days. Okay. Now, while you are marching, no one is to say a word. You're supposed to be silent the entire time. Okay? Now, on the seventh day, you are marching around seven times. Instead of once, you're marching around seven times. At the end, the priests who had the seven trumpets, who were kind of in the middle, would blow their trumpets, and all of the people would shout. Shout very, very loudly. Okay, so this is the battle plan that God has laid out. This is going to sound like a very strange battle plan to the Israelites. There's no sneaky trickery trying to get in the city. There's no big, powerful weapon that's going to bring the walls down. It's simply marching silently and blowing a trumpet and shouting. Okay. But this was God's plan. God having the Israelites trust him and having the people of Jericho know the Israelites didn't do anything. So, God told him, once you do that, once you march around the city once a day for six days, once you march around seven times on that seventh day, and then when you blow the trumpets and shout, the walls of Jericho will fall down. Then you can go into the city and take the city. Okay? Now, just as God told Joshua what he and the Israelite army were supposed to do, God tells us what to do. God tells us this in the Bible. In his Ten Commandments, through our parents, through our teachers, um, through our grandparents, through our pastor, God tells us all of these things. Uh, Psalm 119, verse 105 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. If you think, wake up in the middle of the night and your room is dark, what's one of the first things you want to do is you want to turn on a light so you can see things. You walk into a dark room, the first thing you do is turn on a light. God's word is like a light. It shows us our way in the darkness of sin. God's word shows us what we are supposed to do, how we are supposed to do it, and how we can live lives for God while we are here on earth. Okay, so God has given Joshua the orders. And the Israelites obeyed. They did exactly what God wanted them to do. So once a day for six days, they marched around the city of Jericho. They had the soldiers first, the priests with the seven trumpets, the priests with the Ark of the Covenant, and then soldiers at the end. They marched quietly. They didn't speak. The seventh day, they got up really early. And they marched around seven times. And the last time they marched around, the priests blew their trumpet blast, and they shouted, and Joshua shouted, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Now, how did Joshua know that God had given them the city? Joshua believed God's promise. God had told him, I will give you the city, and Joshua believed God. So the Israelites, they showed their faith to God by obeying him. So the Israelites showed their faith by obeying God. How can we show our faith? The exact same way. We show our faith by obeying God. We have instructions from God too, the commands that he gives us in his word. When we keep God's commands, we are showing our faith and we are showing God that we love him. And we want to thank him for all he has done for us. And what is the best thing that God has done for us? God sent Jesus to suffer and die on the cross to take away our sins so that we can go to heaven. So that's something we want to do. We want to obey God's commandments and God's rules as a way of thanking God for what he has done for us. All right, so the Israelites, they've marched around seven times. The priests blew their trumpets. The people shouted, and the walls came crashing down. So the Israelites were able to rush into the city. Now, if you remember from our lesson last week, the Rahab and her family, she was supposed to tie that red cord in the window, and she did. So Rahab and her family were safe. The Israelites did not hurt Rahab or her family. They killed the rest of the people because that was God had 
commanded the Israelites to do. So Joshua also had the men, just as God commanded, take the silver, gold, bronze, and iron, any of those precious metals that were worth um, money in the city, and place them in the tabernacle. Not to give the riches to themselves, but to give it to God, because God is the one who won this battle for them. There's no way that marching and trumpets and shouting should bring down a stone wall. But that's exactly what it did because God provided a miracle for the Israelites. So the soldiers, they set things on fire and burned the city of Jericho to the ground. This was the first city in the land of Canaan that God gave to the Israelites. And we know that God is going to continue to help the Israelites take the promised land and make it theirs because this is what God had promised them. God had promised them the land of Canaan way back in Abraham and to his family and to the Israelites for so many years the Israelites have been waiting for to go to back to the land of Canaan and now they are there and God is giving it to them. All right. So we know God excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. God has blessed people who have showed their faith. When Noah obeyed God and built the ark, God blessed him by saving him and his family from the flood. Abraham obeyed God and moved far away from his home. God blessed him with a new land, with many riches, with a son, with the promise of the Savior. And that his family would eventually be countless as the stars. When the 12 spies went into the land of Canaan, Caleb and Joshua obeyed God by trusting in him, by trying to encourage the Israelites that we can take the land of Canaan now. God blessed them by allowing them to enter the land of Canaan. If you remember, Caleb and Joshua were the only people over 20 that were allowed to enter the land of Canaan. Rahab trusted in God and helped the spies. God blessed her and her family by saving their lives when they were destroyed in Jericho. God blesses our lives as well, and out of thanks for that, we want to obey his commandments. We want to do what is right, what is good, because of what God has done for us. So, part of that is praying to God, because God tells us he wants us to pray to him whenever we have troubles, or to say thanks, to ask him for something. So we are going to do that now, and let's close with prayer. Dear God, you have shown great love to us by saving us and giving us the gift of faith. Help us show our thanks to you by obeying your commands. We pray that you continue to use your holy word to guide us all the days of our lives. Amen. I have no other worksheets or anything for you today. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to message me. Um, I look forward to worshiping with you this weekend and in the weeks to come. God bless.